announcing a pilot program, and it's this van that's sitting behind me, and it's the Better Way van. And let me tell you what we're going to do. Well, this van is going to be uh, run by St. Martin's Hospitality Center. This is a city van. I think it's a 07 or an 06 or maybe an 08. It's a van that we had at the city of Albuquerque and it wasn't being used uh, to its highest and best use. So we took the used van and we had it wrapped with this, uh, with this uh, symbol. Now, with the signage. Now what we're doing is we're contracting with Father Rusty and St. Martin's Hospitality Center. They'll be driving this van. In fact, Will is here today. Will's gonna be the driver. And every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, now let me say this again, this is a pilot program. So we're gonna start and we're gonna try this out. So on Tuesday and Thursday mornings around 7 or 7.30 in the morning, Will's gonna get in the van and he's gonna travel uh, the intersections of Albuquerque. He'll probably concentrate initially on the, the locations where we have the blue signs because we've had the community request more blue signs and I think there's 33 now in the community. So Will's gonna go out and he's gonna to try to engage folks. So if there's somebody that's panhandling or holding up a sign that says, uh, we'll work for food, uh, Will's going to stop and he's going to engage with these folks and we're going to actually offer him a job for the day and we're going to pay him nine dollars cash and we're going to let them come to work through St. Martin's on contract with the city and help do city beautification projects, weed and litter control and we're also going to have them work with us on uh, environmental compliance uh, which could be anything from working at the landfill to make sure that all of our, our filters are, are clean and, and that we're meeting all the compliance issues with the EPA and others for that. So this does a couple of things. If someone actually wants to work and they're struggling, um, we're going to try to give people uh, an opportunity. We think we're going to shoot for five or ten uh, folks the first couple of weeks, and we'll see. We'll see if, any, if we have any takers. We're going to ask them if they want to come to work, and we'll pay them the cash. And then while we're doing that, however, uh, we're going to engage them and try to get them connected with services. So an individual may decide to come to work for that day and do some city beautification work. Um, while they're there, uh, there'll be people that, that will help counsel them. And at the end of the day, they'll go back to St. Martin's Hospitality Center, and if they need shelter, uh, we've automatically connected them. If they need help with substance abuse or mental health issues, we're automatically uh, connecting them to those services. And if, we, um, and if someone is, is disabled or someone is unable or unwilling to work, it's just one more opportunity for us as a community to reach out and say, listen, we care about you, we care about your circumstances, we want to help you um, get through these tough times that you find yourself in. And, and if, if part of that for you means uh, coming to work for the day and help make the city more beautiful, well, we want to provide that opportunity. So we're excited about this, and, and we'll see how this goes. We're going to give it a shot for the next couple of weeks and, uh, and, and, uh, and see, how, see how it's going to work. And there's a couple of people I really want to thank. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Father Rusty Smith from uh, St. Martin's. We have a great collaboration between the city and many of our nonprofits in the community. And Father Rusty's has been great. We've had, we, we now have money going from the city to, to pay for, um, you know, outreach, uh, street outreach through St. Martin's, and the programs are working really well. So thank you, uh, Vicky Palmer. Thanks so much. The uh, the assistant, uh, the associate executive director of St. Martin's, uh, Will William Cole uh, next to me here is the hired as the driver. Certainly Randy Woodcock at, at the United Way of Central New Mexico. He's their VP and Chief Strategic Officer, uh, Jeanette Brawl as well, who's the Director of Communications. And from the city, Gilbert Montano, my Chief of Staff, has been working on this for the better part of a couple of months. Mark Chavez in my office, thanks Mark for your help. John Soliday, who's our Director of Solid Waste, and Marco is here as well uh, today. Thank you so much. And Doug Chaplin from our Family and Community uh, Services. So let me just, we'll take some questions. I'm going to have Father Rusty speak here for just a minute, but let me just try to synopsize this best I can. So as an additional outreach to those in need in our community, this van will be traveling the city of Albuquerque and it will actually be stopping at intersections where we encounter panhandlers and we're gonna ask them if they'd like to work for the day. If they say yes, St. Martin's is gonna bring them on at $9 cash per hour. We'll give them an honest day's work. Uh, we'll connect them with shelter that evening and we'll connect them with other services within the community. Uh, and, and we'll continue to outreach for those uh, in our community that need a helping hand. So uh, we're excited about this pilot program and uh, with that, I'm gonna have Father Rusty come up and say a few words, and then we'll be happy to take your questions. Hey, Jim. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. So St. Martin's is just so happy to have this invitation to work in partnership with the city of Albuquerque. I think what's so important is people who panhandle on the streets are just like us. Uh, they actually want a job. They want some place to live. But there's a really important part of that. It's the human touch. And I think that's why this is such an important sort of innovation. Because Will is going to be a human being, not just driving by, handing out something, but he's actually going to be handing out a hand to say, I can help you. And 
the money is really significant enough that people will be able to work their way off the street. The connection the mayor talks about is critical. We're going to have people with mental health backgrounds, with substance abuse backgrounds, and housing able to interact with these folks to make sure they have every opportunity they can to get off the streets. And the last part, we have so many good partnerships. It really is about this partnership to end homelessness. And we are just so grateful for this amazing innovation. Thanks so much. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I'll just end with this. You know, sometimes, um, you know, we want to reach out all the time. We want to reach out to our community and provide services. But sometimes uh, the best thing for certain individuals is just have an opportunity to go out and make an honest wage for the day. And if we can do that at the same time that we are reaching out for additional services in our community and beautifying our community and coming into environmental compliance on things that are important to us, uh, I think this could be a real win-win for individuals that need a hand and the city of Albuquerque. With that, we'll have been happy to answer questions. Yeah. How does that interaction go with uh, the specialists, uh, you know, substance abuse, mental health, housing? Are they going to be in the van and talking to the people in the van while they're in route? So what's, what's, what's going to happen is, yeah, what's, what's going to happen is the van's going to go out uh, twice a day on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it'll go around 7, 7.30 in the morning, ask folks if they'd like to come and, and earn a wage for the day, making our city more beautiful. Um, if they say yes, obviously we get them to the work site that goes through St. Martin's. Uh, at the end of the day, they'll be taken to St. Martin's as well, and that's where you'll find these connections. Uh, if someone is unable or unwilling to work that day, then Will is there to make sure that they have a connection point so that they can reach out and come down to St. Martin's. And if it's at the end of the day, so the van will make a second run around noon or early afternoon. And if it's too late to work that day, those folks will be invited to meet the next morning at St. Martin's. And then the van will go out again the, ne the next time, uh, the, next, the next day after that. And so it's so much of the so much of what we've learned you know, that I've learned as a mayor, and I think our community is really understanding in a big way, is that we can have and we do have a lot of great services. We provide almost 18 million dollars worth of services through our city budget. Uh, that's in addition to whatever funding we have from the state of New Mexico and the nonprofit community, which is very robust. Would you raise 30 million dollars last year? Some 27 million dollars last year, plus the work uh, the dollars that come from the federal. Uh, side of the equation. But if you can't connect people to the services and you can't give them opportunities, sometimes uh, you're not having the positive impact that you want. So this outreach van, the Better Way van, is just one more thing that we can do to try to connect folks to services and then give them an opportunity uh, to make an honest uh, living for the day and, and get out there and help our city be better. I have a two-part question. Yeah. How did this idea come about and did the negative feedback about the signs not really working or since May and there's only $1,600 raised. Sure. Did that play a part in coming up with this part to say we have to do more? Well, we, we think the program's been a success. Anytime we've had 2,300 people, think about that, 2,300 times somebody picked up a telephone and called 311 where we can connect them to services. That's, that's good stuff. Um, the fact that we've had almost $2,000 in other than dollars, you know, 2,000 times somebody didn't give a dollar out the window, they decided to have a collective impact and go to the United Way, that had something to do with it. But this is just a continual effort. If you look at, it, at what we've done in this administration, Albuquerque heading home, we went from, you know, basically a non-existent housing first program through the city of Albuquerque. We had some nonprofits doing good work. Now we have 450 people in, 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 in housing. That's a big deal. And uh, this is just a natural continuation of ways that we're looking to outreach to those in our community that need a hand and give them meaningful ways to get the help that they need and then give them some, some, some the sense of pride of being able to go out and uh, have a job for the day as well. Is there any talk of expanding the 311 to be 24-7 every day of the week? Now this this was this is not an emergency phone number. This is this these signs were put up to be there at a time of day when people would most likely be panhandling, which is during rush hour in the morning, rush hour in the evening. And to that extent, it's working uh, incredibly well. Before these signs went up, you still had to call numbers. There's still emergency numbers that you can call in the city of Albuquerque to get that emergency help. So this was never meant to be to supplant those efforts that are out there, both from the nonprofit community and from the from the public sector community and from the faith community. So it was never intended to do that, so we don't have any intention of changing that, but we want to continually get out there and just extend a hand. Like like Father Rusty said, sometimes it's just a matter of extending a hand and saying, listen, we really do want to help. Is this a way that we can get you off a corner, get you out of get you, out, you know, from having to walk into traffic and try to get a dollar bill and then give our community uh, a better way to donate. And so if you go to donateabq.org, you're going to see those four initial categories. Help feed the hungry, help house the homeless, help with mental health services. Now when you go there, you're going to see an additional box and you can donate money to actually help someone get a job for the day. 
And so that will be on there here fairly soon when you go to the donateabq.org website. Would you say it's kind of like an internship? Like what if they do this and they do the job well? We will, how, Boy, we'd love, we'd love to see stories. You know, the, the, when, when I talk to people, uh, uh, you know, stories of success, when I talk to folks around the community, if they've been out of work a long time or if they've got substance abuse issues or if they've got mental health issues or whatever reason that they find themselves on the corner that day, um, if you can help them get connected to employment, there's just, a, there's just a lot of good things happen when, 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 a, when a man or woman has a job to do when they get up in the morning. And, and we think that this will be a positive thing uh, from that standpoint, but also a positive thing to get them connected to these services. So we, we think that all those things are happening, and I'm, I'm really hopeful. You know, we might come across some folks that this is how they get started. This is how they get off the corner panhandling, and, and they, get a, they get a little bit of a foundation. They get connected to some of the services through one of our local nonprofits, and they start getting treatment for substance abuse if that's the issue, or, or, or get help with the mental health issues if that's their issue. And, and we hope to see some, some upward, you know, some uplifting stories come out of this but only time will tell so that's why we're starting it with a pilot project that's why we've created five to ten jobs to begin with and so we'll go out there and we'll test the waters and we'll see if folks if you're standing there with a sign that says I want to work well we'll see if you mean it and if you if you see uh, you need help in connection with services well we're there to help connect you with those and then hopefully we'll have some uh, some good stories come out of this Right. Under the IRS. Yes. Right. And after that, what happens? Well, you know, Father, you want to talk about this because St. Martin's does this on a regular basis, so they know, you know, everything will be uh, compliant with the laws of the United States and the tax codes and things. And and there's a certain point where you do a 1099. So Father Rusty does this with other programs. Let me have him describe the details of that to you. And it's actually fairly simple for all of our employees. They will become temporary employees when they go beyond the $600, they will actually file uh, paperwork so they can pay taxes. So they will shift over. We will pre-alert them when they're coming to that place and then we'll actually walk them through step by step to help them take care of all the legal paperwork they need. And I just want to say one other part of this, we have an employment program that's going to be engaged with these individuals because our goal would be to transfer them into full-time employment.